Hi, welcome to Linda's Take. Today we are going to look at the Illustrated Excel 2019 Excel SAM capstone for modules one through four, the Cello Worldwide. I have already downloaded my instructions from Cengage and here is my starter file. I've already saved it onto my desktop and now I'm ready to start working through the instructions. Starting out with in cell K1, we want to insert a formula using the today function. So I'm going to come up here to cell K1, make that my active cell. Kind of come up here to the formulas tab and right here is my date and time function library. I'm going to scroll down to today and it lets us know that I don't need to add anything else to this. It's just going to return the current date. I'm going to say OK. And now I have my current date in there. The next thing it wants us to do is to fill the range D4 to F4 with the series based on the value in C4. Here in C4, you see that it has the month of September named. We could actually just go over and type in October, November, and December, of course, but we can also use the fill function so you don't have to worry about misspelling anything. We're going to come here to the lower right hand corner your mouse looks like a little skinny plus sign or crosshairs you're going to click down with your left mouse key and hold and then drag over to f4 and it's going to automatically fill the rest of those monthly names in for us this little box right here is the autofill options box we don't need to do anything with that it's not going to go away until you type something else into your Excel spreadsheet, so don't stress over seeing that on your worksheet. It will go away, I promise. We're going to now go to A4, and we can see we have San Antonio here. We want to make it a little more readable and more meaningful, so we are going to actually spread it out over the range A4 through A17. So we're going to first select that range A4 down to A17. Up here on the Home tab, we are going to select the Merge and Center. Click that. It's going to merge that group of cells. Now we want to rotate the text so it reads from bottom to top. So right over here, we have our orientation for our text. I'm going to click on that little arrow, come down here to Format Cell Alignment. And in our little box that pops up, we have orientation right over here. We've got this little box. We can just move this up here to 90 degrees, say OK. And now we can read our text from bottom to top. The next thing we want to do here is we want to middle align the text. So in here on our home tab in the alignment grouping, we have our alignment. Right now we do have it centered, but we want to align it in the middle. So we're going to select middle align to move it up. Finally, we want to resize column A to a width of 6.0. There's more than one way to do this. The way I like to do it is go here between the border between the A and B column and I'm going to click with my left mouse key when my mouse changes to the vertical line and the horizontal arrow and I'm going to just drag this over until it reaches 6.0 and I'm finished with making that it looks a little better. We want to auto fit column B so that we can see all of the information in that column. You can see right down here we don't see all the text in B5 or B6. So we're just going to come up here to the border between B and C. When your mouse changes shape, you're going to double click and it's going to auto fit our column. We want to do some calculations now. So we are going to go to cell C7. See, we don't have any data in there. So we need to finish, enter in 45,600 as our business services revenue for September. So I'm just going to, on my keypad, type in 45600. When I hit enter, see this automatically changes over here. Now I am ready 
in C8 to add my September revenue. So I'm going to come up here to my auto sum on my home tab and make sure the range is collect correct. It should be adding up C5 through C7. I'm just going to click on my check mark right here to enter that in. And now I am going to copy this information, this formula in C8. I'm going to copy it down to F8. And I also want to copy it to H8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back here in C8. I'm going to right click and copy. Come over here to H8 and paste. So I've got my information. You'll notice I have this little writing border right here. And I have to get rid of that, I'm just going to hit my escape key. We want to format some ranges to the comma number style. So first thing we need to do is select the two ranges it's asking for. It's asking for C13 through F16. So I'm going to come down here to C13 and drag down to F16. Hold down on your control key on your keyboard and then select H13 to H16 on the home tab in our numbers grouping we're going to click on this comma you'll notice in my worksheet now I have some cells that have hashtags on them anytime you see hashtags in a cell all that is telling you is that there is a number in that cell that is too long to fit the width of the cell so basically you need to format your column so that it's wider so that you can see all of the number in this case, we don't need to do anything yet because we also want to get rid of our decimals. So right here next to our comma, you have increase and decrease decimal. We want to get rid of those two decimals. And as soon as you do that, now we see the numbers come up in our cell. So anytime you see those hashtags, then you are going to, all that's telling you is that the number is two long for the width of your cell so you just need to make your column wider in step seven we are going to use the minimum the min function and the max function so here in c24 we want to figure out our lowest revenue which would be the min function so up here in the auto sum area i'm going to click on this arrow and come down to min and it wants me to display the lowest revenue from the range C5 through F7. So I'm going to come up here to C5 and drag down to F7. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do the same thing in C25, except this time I'm going to use the max function. The max function. Make sure you select the right range, C5 through F7 and hit the enter key there we have our lowest revenue and our highest revenue to make this stand out and make sure that everyone understands that this information belongs together we're going to put a border around the range b24 to c25 so we're going to select that range come up here to the font grouping and click on the border arrow scroll down to the bottom where it says more borders our color for our border we want it to be black text one lighter 35 percent and we want to make sure we're around all four of the outside borders so i'm just clicking on the edge there and then say okay here in our worksheet we have a clustered column chart we want to show the expenses by type not by month right now it's showing by month we want it to be by type. First thing we need to do is select our chart so that we have our chart design and format tabs visible. I'm going to select chart design. The first thing we're going to do is do the switch row column and watch what happens. We are now looking at our data by type not by month we want to move the legend to the right side of our chart so over here under chart design clear over here on the left we have to add chart element i'm going to scroll down to legend and we are going to select right 
just to move it, make it a little bit easier to read. We want to add a primary vertical axis title. So up here on Add Chart Element, we're going to come here to the axes, and we want primary vertical, and then we want that to read monthly amount. So you can see I'm moving, entering it up here in our formula bar. As soon as I hit Enter, it's going to put it into our chart area. So make sure you spell that correctly or you will get counted wrong. Our chart title. You never want to leave it as chart title. We want our chart title to be expenses by type. Again, watch your spelling. Finally, um, on our chart area, we want our December information to be dark red accent one. So to do that, we're just going to click on our bar for December. And we know we've selected December because over here in our chart area, you can see this is what we have selected. We're going to come up here to the Format tab and go to Shape Fill. And we're going to select Dark Red Accent 1. And then we're going to click off of that. And you notice all of our December bars change to that dark red. Now we want to add a border just to set our chart off from the rest of our data. So we're going to come here to Shape Outline. And our color, we want black text one darker 50% or no lighter 50% sorry black text one lighter 50% just to make our chart stand out a little bit we've also been asked to include a chart that shows the monthly profits for our San Antonio office so we can see which months have been uh, more favorable so to create a chart the first thing we need to do is select the data so our data is from the range C21 to F22. So we're going to come down here to C21 and go down to F22. You can see we have our headers selected, and then we also have our data. We're going to come up here to Insert, and they want us to insert a donut chart. And that is a type of pie chart. So we're going to come over here where it says the pie chart. And right down here is Donut. So we have our donut chart here. Now we want to move it. We want the upper left corner to be within cell J19. So I'm going to take my mouse, and when it's a four-headed arrow, I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to come down to J19. Just kind of eyeball it. Then I'm going to come down here to my lower right corner. We want it to be within cell P31. So I'm going to click when I have my double-headed arrow move it over to P and down to P31. So you just kind of have to eyeball it, make sure you get there with P31. We don't want to leave this profit amount in the title, so I'm going to click in here and highlight it. I want it to be September to December profit using the abbreviations for September and December. And finally, I want it to be layout six so that we have percentages displayed in our donut chart. So up here in our chart design tab, we have quick layout. These are some layouts that are set up for us already pre-built. Don't have to do anything, but select the one you want. We want layout six, and you can see the changes uh, that it made in our donut chart. We also want a chart showing the revenue earned from the mobile phones, wireless services, and business services. The first thing we need to do is select the range that we want our chart to display. And we want it to display B4 through F7. So I'm going to come up here to B4, and I'm going to scroll down to F7. Make sure you don't select that total row. And I want a stacked column chart. So up here under the Insert tab, I'm going to come over here. And right here is our bar chart. And here is our stacked column. Right here, second one in the 2D column. We actually want this chart to be on its own sheet. So with that chart selected up here on the chart design area, we have 
move chart clear over here on the right side of the ribbon. I'm going to select that. I want it to be on a new sheet and I want this new sheet to be called revenue chart and you can see we now have a new sheet called revenue chart in our workbook. We want to change the chart style to style 7. So here we have our different styles. We want to select chart 7 or style 7 so that it matches our other charts. We want to change the font size of everything to 14. So we're going to come up here to the Home tab, change it from 9 to 14. And we want to remove the chart title since it's already on our Worksheet tab. So I'm just going to click up here on Chart Title and hit the Delete key to remove that. We want to clarify some of our data. Like we don't know if this is 250,000 pencils what it's referring to. It's actually referring to dollars, but we need to change that to the accounting number format so people know that. So we're going to come up here to our Format tab and clear over here on the left is our current selection grouping. Right now we're in the chart area. If I click on this down arrow right here, you can see I have different areas in my chart that I can change how it looks. We're going to come down here to the vertical axes. We're going to select that and we're going to format this selection. It's going to bring up a navigation pane clear over here on our right. Down here at the very bottom is number. This is where we're going to change it to be the accounting format. So our category, we want it to be accounting. Make sure decimal places is zero and our symbol is the dollar sign. And now we can close this navigation pane and you can see now it lets us know that this is referring, referring to dollars. We also want to add a data table underneath our chart. So we're going to come back up here to the chart design tab and clear over here we have add chart element. This time we're going to come down to data table and we want our data table with legend keys to display at the bottom so that you can see exactly what numbers it's referring to. And so now we don't need the legend across the bottom because we have it in our table. So up here on add chart element, we're going to go down to legend and just say none. And so there is our ch revenue chart worksheet. We're going to come back to the revenue and expenses worksheet now. We want to track the tr trends for each type of revenue expense and for the profit analysis. So here in G5, we're going to make that our active cell. And this is where we want our spark line to show. A spark line shows trends. We're going to come up here to the insert tab. It's going to scroll over here to where it says spark lines. We want a line spark line. We have a little argument box that pops up. Let's us asks us what is our data range. Our data range is C5 to F7 and you can either enter it in or you can highlight the range. Location range is G5. It should already be there because we made G5 our active cell to start with. Let's say OK. So now you can see what the trend is. We want to add data markers just so it's a little easier to see what the trend is. So up here on our Sparkline tab, we're going to select Markers. And we want our marker color to be black text 1. So we come over here to Marker Color. And we want to select Markers and make it black text 1. And then we're going to copy our trend line our trend line down so I'm going to right click in it and click copy I'm going to paste it in C6 to C8 so I'm going to select that range right click and paste I also want to paste it in G12 to G17 so I'm going to right click again and click paste I also want it down here in cell G22. So I'm going to select G22, right click, and paste. Again, I have my little border marching around here in G5. And to get rid of that, I just need to hit my escape key on my keyboard.
So we're finished with the revenue and expenses worksheet. Now let's go play with our business customer analysis worksheet. We're going to enter in some functions here. So the first one we'd want to do is in E5, we want to calculate the number of years the customers have been with our company. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is hit the equal sign. So we want to enter a formula that subtracts the start date from the current date. Our current date is located up here in C2. We want to make C2 an absolute value. We're going to be copying this formula down on our worksheet. And remember that when you copy formulas down, it keeps the data as a relative value relative to the rows or the columns, depending on if you're copying it down or copying it across. We don't want that to happen with cell C2. We want cell C2 to always be in our formula, no matter where we move it on our, or where we copy it to on our spreadsheet. So to do that, we need to make C2 an absolute value. So it absolutely stays C2, no matter where we copy it to. To do that, there's several ways. One way is on your keyboard, click on your F4 key, the function key, F4, and it's going to put those dollar signs in there for you. Remember, if you have a laptop, sometimes those function keys, which are the keys across the top of your keyboard, do more than one thing. So you might have to look for an FN key to toggle the function keys back and forth between the two, the two um, options there. The other thing you could do is just good old fashioned way, type in a dollar sign C, dollar sign two. All those ways will work. You just have to make sure that's an absolute value. Then we're going to subtract D5, which is our customer since. It wants us to be specific with the number of years. So it wants us to divide it by 365.25, which is the number of days in a year accounting for a leap year. So remember in your mathematical equations, the first thing we need to do is we need to subtract our customer start date from the current date before we divide. So in order to tell Excel to make sure you perform this part of our formula first is we need to put parentheses around it. So I'm going to hit a close parenthesis after D5 and then in front of the dollar sign I'm going to make a open parentheses. Now after the last parentheses I can hit divide and then enter 365.25 and I'm going to hit the check mark up here. It wants us to be specific, so it wants us to add one decimal place. So up here in our number grouping, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to increase my decimal by one. So our customers, have, the first customer has been with us 5.2 years. I now am going to copy this formula down to E18. If you get error messages as you're copying this down, that's because you didn't make C2 an absolute value. C2 needs to be an absolute value. You can't just enter C2 into each one of these. It kind of defeats the purpose of just copying the cells down. So make sure you make that C2 absolute value. Cello Worldwide offers a discount to customers who have been with the company for at least four years. So we are going to determine which of these customers qualifies for a discount by using the if function. Basically what an if function does is it tells us if the arguments are met, then this is what's going to happen. So here in H5 is where our discount is. So our argument is if a customer has been with us four years or more, they receive a discount. To enter that formula, we're going to come up here to the Formulas tab, come over to Logical, and come down to If. And that's going to bring up our Logical Test Function Argument box. So our test is if our number of years, which is located in E5, is greater than or equal to 4, if that is a true statement, we want a Y to appear in our box. If it is a false statement, we want it to be in. So you can see up here in our formula bar, if E5 is greater or equal to 4, 
and it's true, it's a yes. If it's false, it's an in or for no. Now I'm going to take my fill handle down here and copy this formula down to H18, and it automatically puts it in a Y or an N. We're hoping to offer new favorable contracts to business customers who are now receiving a discount and also use the wireless service. So they need to meet two criteria. They need to be receiving a discount and using the wireless service. So to determine that, we are going to use the AND function. So up here where we have new contract in I5, we're going to use the AND. So up here under logical, I'm going to select AND. And we have two function arguments. So the first one is if they have wireless, so we're F5. If that equals yes, and since we're entering in a letter into our function, we need to put apostrophes. So apostrophe, capital Y, and another apostrophe. So that's our first argument. Our next one is do they have a discount? So here, oh, I had my cell. I need to click down here in logical two, select H5. And if that equals yes, so again, apostrophe Y apostrophe and OK. So they didn't meet the criteria. So we're going to take this and now we're going to copy it down to I18. And you can see here this is true because they have a wireless and they have a discount. So coming on down here, our next one is here. The yes to the wireless and yes to the discount. The next one is our OR function. We want to offer a free mobile phone to customers with businesses that are in northern Texas or using an unlimited plan. So over here, our location is in C5, and our plan type here is in G5. So do they get a free phone? So we're going to come up here to logical and choose or. So here's our function. So first one is if the location, which is C5 equals N. Again, use your apostrophe here. And logical two, if our plan type, which is in G5, equals unlimited. So we're going to put apostrophe. Then you have to type out unlimited. And then we're going to say OK. So this is true because he has northern Texas. And we're going to scroll down and enter that information and copy that formula down to J8. We want to count our total number of business customers. Now this particular spreadsheet is kind of small. You could just go in and count them, but imagine you're working at a huge company. You just want to count the number of customers. You don't want to have to manually do it. Excel has a formula for that. So we're going to come up here to M4, and we're going to use a function called counta and it's a statistical function so we're going to come up here to more functions statistical and we're going to come down here and select counta and we want it to count values from our customer customer id field which is in b5 down to b18 that's all we need to do here let's say okay and you can see we have 14 customers we want to know the average years as a customer. So we want average, which is another statistical function. So more functions, statistical, average. Now we're going to select the range of years they have been with our business. So we want C5 down through C18 and say OK. Our average years for our customers is 3.2. We are now ready to save our workbook and submit it in Cengage, see how we did. And you can see we got 100 out of 100. 
If you didn't get that score, you need to look through your graded report to see what's in red, to see what you did incorrect. Depending upon your instructor, you may be able to resubmit for a higher grade. I want to thank you for spending some time with me looking over our assignment in Excel. Thanks for joining me here on Linda's Take and have a great evening. If you like what I've done, please subscribe to my channel and check back for more Excel, Word, PowerPoint assignments.